Welcome to the second part of our tutorial series on portfolio return and risk. In the previous part, we talked about portfolio return computations, and you can find a link uh, to that tutorial in the video description if you would like to watch that first. In the second and final part of this series, we'll talk about portfolio risk computations. So like last time, I would like to start with uh, an example to motivate um, the um, discussion here. Uh, if you'd remember from the previous uh, uh, part, so the first part of the um, tutorial, we, we start with a portfolio containing two stocks, right? And we had invested $200 in the first stock and $800 in the second stock, totaling $1,000 of investment. And the first stock was offering 10% return and the second one, uh, 6%. And basically, we argued that portfolio return is simply a weighted average. So we weight each return with an investment weight. So for stock A, the investment weight is 20%. Why? It is simply 200 divided by 1,000. So we multiply that by 10%. And then for stock B, we put 8% of our money in that stock times its return, 6% and that gave us 6.8% return. But how about the risk of this portfolio? So for that, we need additional information. So let's say uh, the risk of each stock is given in the final column as 30% for stock A and 10% for stock B. And by risk, we mean standard deviation of returns here. Okay, so standard deviation of returns or sometimes also called return volatility, okay? Then uh, you might wonder, could we calculate portfolio risk in the same manner? So could we say is 20% times 30% plus 8% times 10%? Unfortunately, that would be wrong, right? We still need one piece of information here, which is missing. And that is the interaction uh, of the stocks within the portfolio. And there's a simple reason for that. When stock movements at least partially cancel out each other, uh, the, the overall volatility of the portfolio or the riskiness of the portfolio goes down. So this is what we mean by the benefits of diversification. And to capture that, we either need to know the covariance between the two uh, returns of these two stocks or the correlation coefficient. And in fact, the two are related to one another. So we can define the correlation between the two stocks as simply the scaled covariance. So this is covariance between uh, stocks A and B. And in the uh, denominator, we have the standard deviation of each stock. So standard deviations are already given. So this is 30% and this is 10%. So to compute portfolio risk, we either need to know the covariance or the correlation in which case we can compute covariance, okay? So let's assume uh, for this particular example, the correlation coefficient between uh, the two stocks is zero point, uh, minus 0 0.44. So there's some negative correlation. I've picked this number on, uh, on purpose to get some nice figures, okay? So using that, I can compute the covariance between the two stocks. Now, how am I going to compute portfolio risk? So the structure is going to be a bit different uh, than um, portfolio return. And I'll, I'll show you the general formula later on. But essentially, what you need to do is to start with the weight of the first stock, square that, times the variance of returns for the first stock. So this is standard deviation of return. So we need to square that as well. Okay. So this is stock A. So the first term is for stock A. Then moving to stock B, we do the same. So we take the uh, weight, which is 8%, times uh, the variance of the second stock, so which is 10% squared. Okay. And still we need the covariance term. So that will be 2 times the first weight, so I'm going to show you the general formula later on, but for the moment, 
uh, just bear with me. So the first weight times the second weight times covariance. And covariance will be the correlation, so minus 0.44 times the volatility of the first one, so 30%, times uh, the volatility of the second one, which is, oops, sorry, 10%. All right. So this will give me portfolio, the, the, the variance of portfolio returns. Okay, so I can denote this the variance of portfolio returns. And if I take the square root of that, that gives me portfolio risk. Now, this is going to be 30% squared is basically uh, 0 0.09. And this is uh, going to be 0 0.01. Okay. And this whole thing, the covariance, is going to be minus 0 0.0132. So on our website, we have actually a very handy portfolio risk calculator, where if you put these numbers in, it will give you the uh, portfolio risk, right? So you can use that to uh, check your calculations. So in this case, what you need to enter is the weight for the first asset, right, 20%. Weight for the second asset, 8%. So if we go back, so these are 20% weight, 8% weight. And then the variance of returns for the first asset. So this is basically this over here. Then the variance of the second one, which is this one. And finally, the covariance term, okay, which is the one over here. So you can also use the same calculator uh, for a three asset portfolio. So you can find the link to this calculator in the video description if you'd like to check it out. And once I put all the uh, figures in, I can see that this is gonna be the portfolio variance. And if I take the square root, the standard deviation as or portfolio risk is 0 0.076 or 7.6%. Now I can say that this portfolio has a return of 6.8% and volatility of 7.6%, right? So this is the portfolio risk, okay? Now, let me also show you the general portfolio risk formula. So this was the portfolio return formula, okay? It's a weighted average of the individual returns. And this is my portfolio variance formula. And again, if I take the square root, I get a portfolio standard deviation or portfolio risk. So as you can see, this looks a bit more complicated because we have the covariance terms. So there's a double sum here. There are the investment weights and so on. So I would like to show you two special cases. The first one is a portfolio with two assets. Okay, so I'm going to spell out the formula for two assets, then for three assets, and so on. Okay. Once you get the idea, actually the rest follows for any number of assets. So for two assets, I've got three terms. The first one is the um, investment weight of the first asset squared times the variance of that asset squared. And this happens basically when i and j are both equal to one, right? So because it's uh, weight one times weight one becomes weight one squared. And sigma one one is the covariance with that of the asset with itself, which is essentially its variance. So this is the first term. Then I've got a similar term for the second asset, okay? And a third term, for the covariance, okay, sigma one, sorry, omega one, omega two, covariance one, two. You might wonder why there are two of these, because this there are two cases where this can appear. So you might have, for example, omega one, omega two, sigma one, two, and then later on, omega two, omega one, sigma two, one. But sigma one, two is the same 
is sigma 2, 1. So these two terms are actually identical. That's why we have two of them in the calculation. And this is exactly what we use in our example over here. So this is the first term, second one, and the final third term that captures the covariances, okay? The first one, the second one, and the third term. How about three assets? All we need to do is to add some additional terms, okay? So these uh, won't change. Because I have a third asset, I need to have a third variance term. So this is the new term, one of the new terms. I will still have this original term over here, but I, I now need to include other covariance terms as well. Specifically, I need to include a term that captures the covariance between the first asset and the third one. And finally, the one between the second asset and the third asset. So these three terms are new, right? So we've got the original three terms and we add more terms as well. And as you increase the number of assets in your portfolio, for each stock, you will add one additional term that captures its variance and many additional terms that captures its covariance with all the previous assets that are already in your portfolio. So when you have many assets in the portfolio, you will have a lot of covariance terms, right? So one last thing uh, for you to test your knowledge. So here's an example for you uh, where we have three stocks in the portfolio and you can use now uh, the formula that is shown uh, below here, okay, to compute uh, portfolio risk for this formula and this for particular example, uh, the third stock isn't correlated with the previous two stocks. So we have actually exactly the same stocks as before. We are simply introducing a third stock in the portfolio, and it's not going to be correlated with stocks A and B, which may actually speeds up the calculations. So you can find the solution to this exercise on our uh, website. Again, the link is here, but uh, We'll put it in the video description as well. And also you can double check your answers with our portfolio risk calculator. Okay, so this is all I want to cover in this uh, tutorial on portfolio risk. Uh, I hope you found it useful and see you in the next video. Bye for now.